and gentlemen, keep the questions coming. As you can see, our experts know their stuff. So moving on to the next topic, cloud capability. This is an absolute must when it comes to smart buildings in the future. And as we've just learned, this applies all the way down to the field device level. But what do we do with existing buildings? I mean, leave them stupid? Hmm. Our next expert shows how buildings can be retrofitted so that their systems can also deliver data to the cloud. And for this, I'd like to welcome Robert Yon, who is joining us now, also from, surprise, Zook. Hello and welcome. My name is Robert John, and I'm coming here from Zook. And uh, today, I'm happy, at least, I can talk to you via the webcast, and I will explain to you how to connect buildings in order to make them smart. I mean, the situation is we have buildings, they are automated. They might be energy efficient. Some of them might have a remote connectivity via VPN solution. While may others, they having, a, you can get data out of it, maybe alert data, but all together, Specifically for small buildings, this really sounds like a cost constraints. But it's not anymore. With the, with the buildings, or let's say with the, with the Siemens, IoT and cloud-based services, we really make buildings smart. As if we want to do it in three steps. The first of all, first step, you need to bring the data to the cloud then they can, the builder can talk with the cloud. And for this, we have a solution, a standardized and secure connectivity. But okay, now if the data is in the cloud, what next? Yes, we have the perfect solution for you. We can remotely monitor your building and operate it down to the equipment level and merely means on, on a data point level where you can operate the set points, not only for one building, it can be for many buildings, for actually for a fleet of sites. And when you think about if you want to do this for a fleet of sites, ha, who? you need to make sure that it's secure. You need to make sure there's availability of the services. You need also to make sure you want to run software updates at any point in time. You may want to bring new applications on site. For all of this, here we have Edge Digital Services for you, which is the perfect infrastructure to digitize your buildings and make them smart. But before coming to this, let's talk about the first step, the standardized and secure connectivity. Okay, you have your, imagine you have your building controls. Usually they are TCP IP based and they're speaking communicative protocols like Bagnet, Modbus, Connex, and so on. But they're not talking natively to the cloud. For this one, you can bring in a gateway and we have a solution in place. It's the Connect X300. And with the X Connect X300, you can connect to this building controls and you browse the network and select the data you want to provision to the cloud. Very easy. I can tell you one building you can connect to the cloud within one day. It's less than a day. And is it only for Siemens devices? Absolutely not. You can do it for any kind of devices as long as they're talking these mentioned protocols before. And we not just bring the data to the cloud, we add semantic information then the data makes sense for you, not only just for an expert. And that's one way to bring the install base. But as you heard before in the session before, there's a portfolio of the Zigo PXC45 devices, which have been built in connectivity to the cloud. But not also the system controls, also on the field level, the intelligent wolf is such a device. Also with this one, it has a built-in connectivity where I can acting as an IoT device and bring the data to the cloud in a secure way. 
Okay, now we have the data in the cloud. What's next? Perfect solution for you is building operator, no doubt. Because with building operator, you can remotely monitor and operate your building. As I was saying, down to the equipment, really down to the data point level. You can command also set points if you want and if it's required. But really a tool for remote service. And in addition, there's also a built-in tunnel where you can really go to the web service on the applications or on the controls which resides on site. So actually you can really go down to the parameter level and operate everything from remote. And you were me asking, okay, who will be using this application? And I can tell you, this is made for all people who are providing building management service for HVAC to their clients. And very specific, this really enhanced on tool for the service technician or for a technical facility manager. Okay, you think, okay, okay, what I can get out of it? Well, what is the ben or actually, what is the benefit for those kinds of applications? I mean, imagine, now you can do the service remote. Your customer calls you. He nags you and says, you know what? The air handling unit is not working. Or something is wrong with the air quality. And you can work from remote. You can dial in or log in and analyze the issues from remote. It means it fasten response time, resolution time, and this leads towards customer satisfaction and also increased loyalty for your building tenants. But not only for them, it's also for you. I mean, since it's a remote service tool, actually you can save unnecessary trips on site, means you can save travel cost. So it's really a win-win situation if you're using an application like Building Operator. And thinking beyond. So we have an application where you can monitor the HVAC system. But also we have an application in place where you can manage the fire detection system from remote. I mean, as much as the, the norms will allow, but you can monitor anomalies from remote. And you also can tunnel in and fix issues from remote. But actually with the same benefits, right? Fasten response time, shorten resolution time, increased customer satisfaction. But also, also again, for you, you can save the travel cost. But think about even beyond, that's not only for our applications. You may have use cases where you want to do something customer specific, a certain customer, where he wants to fasten some task during the entire building life cycle. It means being through the commissioning, engineering phase, or to the operation phase. For such a thing, we have an infrastructure in place which are the edge digital services. And the edge digital service is really for, for you as a system integrator or as an IT consultant or as a software developer. And you will provide additional values to this customer specific need. You can just use this edge digital service. We offer you the entire infrastructure, but also can you develop your applications where you can install it and deploy it in many, 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 many sites as you want. And you can manage them during the entire life cycle as you want. There's no one from Siemens needs to be involved. Just subscribe to the service. That sounds interesting for you? I can imagine. So let's summarize. We as a Siemens we make smart buildings real. And as I was told you, three steps. 
Step number one is always connect the install base and bring the data to the cloud so that it can interact with your buildings from remote. Second step, once the one is established, you can control the buildings from remote if you want. And you can learn, bring more value to the building. And then if more, you can develop your own applications and adapt it to optimize the building and make it more smart even further as you want or as the customers expect it or wishes are. That was it. Thank you very much for watching this webcast. I'm heading back towards Ansbach and I'm looking forward to your questions. Yes, Robert, we have some questions yes, for you and uh, let's get right to it. Yes. Number one, how does the building operator help service providers? What are the main benefits to use this app? Yes, if you're using a remote service application, but not just any remote service application, imagine in the past people were using often VPN-based solutions. And one customer wanted to have this VPN solution while another client was in favor of the other one. And actually, this, over time, it's complex to maintain and administer those kind of application for you as a service provider. And this life becomes more much, much easier. One fits all, you just plug in the gateway, which acts as an IoT device, so there's no intrusive changes to the IoT customer network. Nothing, almost nothing needs to be done, and you can manage all your client installations from one single point of view. Very easy with one login and with one maintenance activity. Which, once that one is in place, you can, as I said, with the remote service, you can fasten the response and resolution time. Which again, it's also your customer gets happy if you can fasten this, speed up those tasks. And then the customer satisfaction automatically increase and also the reality. And pretty sure next year or then after once the service contract finished, he will renew the service contract and with you. And also for you, you can optimize your field stuff and say, okay, I don't need to send for any task or let's say not for every task, someone on site, I can fix the stuff on remote, saving cost, travel costs, very specific, but also I can utilize my expert, which I have, but a really, uh, let's say a small group of experts much, much better than before. All right. Any more questions? Those were uh, some benefits, definitely. Uh, yes, we have uh, two more questions. Um, how does building operator differ from Desigo CC or Navigator, which we can work remotely in as well? Okay, that's, that's I can explain. So Desigo CC is a management station which resides on site usually. So there's a person you can operate a monitoring on a daily basis. And usually the SQL CC is installed on larger buildings or campuses, so to say. While building operator is really targeting small sites, it's rather where you have a similar, with a similar footprint of buildings of small buildings. It can be, imagine it could be a light white facility. It could be schools. It could be, a, let's say, franchise. It could be a, a supermarket chains of those kind of buildings. But even thinking beyond the building, it can be substations. Imagine you now can connect all the substations you have for district heating network or telecommunication stations, radio broadcasting stations. All the things, all these very, very small sites. There's nobody, nobody on site, but still you have the need you need to make sure it's business critical. You want to get these buildings maintained and running. And for those, you can use building operator. And what's the difference to navigator? Yes, navigator is a managed service. A building operator you can manage on your own. And navigator is, the core of navigator is for, let's say to energy optimization task and also to 
analytics of, of the building. But the point is, you can monitor them only. You have to do manual steps if you want to influence the building. With building operator, it's really a hands-on tool for the service operator where really he can dig into and fix the things from remote by themselves. All right, we have one more question. Hope I get that one clear. Um, I think you did. My customer is really concerned about connecting BMS to IoT. How can we reassure them? So what we did for the entire process, I mean, our devices are really secure, security by design. So from the beginning, before we even write the requirement to the development, testing, etc., everything is done on a security. And since it's an IoT device, it means it only creates outbound traffic on standardized HTTPS ports. And usually always the HTTPS, which is a secure port and, and is encrypted, is always open. It's like you would do a similar way as you would do the online banking. It's absolute, the same level of security like for the online banking. If you're not concerned about online banking, I actually, you can also not need to be concerned about uh, bringing building management data, building automation data to the cloud. All right. Thank you very much, Robert. You have a great day and see you later. So what do we learn from all of this, ladies and gentlemen? Well, yes, even older buildings have their spot in the world of tomorrow. Oh,